This is an audiobook recording of Then I Was Guided by Muhammad Al Tijani Al Samawi. Details, purchase, and access to a copy of the book have been listed in the description box. Please enjoy and let us all be lazy intellectuals. Peace. Then I Was Guided by Muhammad Al Tijani Al Samawi. Chapter 17, Part 1. The Opinion of the Companions About Each Other Number 1. Their Testimony That They Themselves Have Changed the Tradition of the Prophet Abu Sayyid al-Khudri says, On the first day of Eid al-Fitr, breaking the fast of Ramadan, and Eid al-Adha, celebrating the end of the pilgrimage, the first thing the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, used to do was say his prayers in the mosque. Then he would see the people, who sat in rows in front of him, and then he started to deliver advice or orders or even finalise outstanding issues, and after all that, he would leave. Abu Sa'id added, the situation continued to be like that, until one day, either Fitr or Adha, I went with Marwan, who was the governor of al Madina. When we arrived at the mosque, which had a new pulpit built by Kathir ibn al-Salt, Marwan headed for the pulpit before praying, so I pulled him by his clothes, but he pushed me and went up onto the pulpit. He addressed the people before he prayed, so I said to him, By Allah, you have changed it. O oh, Abu Sa'id, what you know has gone. I said, By Allah, what I know is better than what I do not know. Marwan then said, People did not sit for us after the prayer, so I put it in before the prayers. I look for the reasons which led those companions to change the sunnah, the traditions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and found that the Umayyads, and most of them were companions of the Prophet, and Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, the writer of the revelation as he was called, in particular used to force people to swear at Ali ibn Abi Talib and curse him from the pulpits of the mosques, as most of the historians have mentioned in their books. Muslim Inis Sahih wrote in the chapter entitled the virtue of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The following. Muawiyah ordered his governors everywhere to take the curse of Ali ibn Abi Talib as tradition and that all the speakers must include it in their speeches. When some of the companions protested very strongly against such a rule, Muawiyah ordered their killing and burning. Among the famous companions who were killed at that order of Muawiyah were Hijr ibn Adi al-Khindi and his followers because they protested and refused to curse Ali, and some of them were buried alive. Abu al-A'la al-Mawdudi wrote in his book, Caliphate and Kingdom. Abu al-Hassan al-Basri said, Muawiyah had four features, and if he had only one of them, it would have been considered a great sin. Number one, making decisions without consulting the companions, who were the light of virtue. Number two, designating his son as his successor. His son was a drunkard, corrupt, and wore silk. Number three, he claimed Ziyad as his son, and the message of Allah said, there is offspring for the honourable woman, but there is nothing for the whore. Number four, his killing of Hijr and his followers. Woe unto him from Hijr and the followers of Hijr. There were some good companions who used to dash out of the mosque immediately after the prayers so they did not have to listen to the speeches, which always ended up with the cursing of Ali. For that reason, the Umayyads changed the tradition of the Messenger of Allah. They put the speech before the prayers so that people listened to it against their will. What kind of companions were these people? They were not afraid of changing the tradition of the Messenger of Allah or even the laws of Allah in order to reach their wicked and low objectives and to satisfy their sinister desires. They cursed a man whom Allah had kept cleansed and purified and made it obligatory for people to pray for him in the same way that they prayed for his messenger. Furthermore, Allah and his messenger made it obligatory for people to love him and the Prophet ﷺ said, Loving Ali is believing and hating him is hypocrisy. But these companions changed the rules and said, We heard, but we disobey. And instead of loving him, praying for him and obeying him, they swore at him and cursed him for 60 years, as has been mentioned in the history books.
Whereas the companions of Moses plotted against Aaron and tried to kill him, some of the companions of Muhammad killed his Aaron and pursued his sons and followers everywhere. They removed their names from the Diwan, account books of the treasury, and prohibited anyone to be named after them. As if that was not enough for them, they cursed him and forced the faithful companions to do so unjustly and by force. By Allah, I stand astonished and perplexed when I read in our sihas how much the Messenger of Allah loved his brother and cousin Ali, and how he put him above all other companions, and even he said, You are to me as Aaron was to Moses, but there will be no prophet after me. He also said the following things about Ali. You are from me and I am from you. Loving Ali is believing and hating him is hypocrisy. I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate. Ali is the master of all the believers after me. Whoever accepts me as his master, then he should also accept Ali as his master. O oh Allah, be friendly with his friends and be enemy to his enemies. If we study all the virtues that the Prophet ﷺ attributed to Ali, which have been mentioned and approved by our scholars in their books, then we would need to write a whole book. So, how did the companions ignore all these texts, swear at him, plot against him, curse him from the pulpits of the mosques, and then fight against him and finally kill him? I tried in vain to find a reason for the behaviour of those people, but found nothing except the love of this life and the competition for it, in addition to the tendency to apostatize and turn back on their heels. I have also tried to attach the responsibility to a group of bad companions and some hypocrites, but regrettably, those were only a few among the famous and the important. The first who threatened to burn his house with its inhabitants was Umar ibn al-Khattab, and the first who fought him were Talha, al-Zubair, Aisha bin Abu Bakr, Umm al Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, and Amr ibn al-As, and many others. I am astonished, and my astonishment will never end. And any responsible free thinker would agree with me as to how the Sunni scholars agree on the righteousness of all the companions and ask for the blessings of Allah to be upon them and pray for all of them without exception, although some of them say, curse Yazid and no further. But where is Yazid among all these tragedies, which no religion or logic could prove? I appeal to the Sunni people, if they truly follow the Prophet's tradition, to ask themselves how they could accept somebody to be righteous when the laws of the Holy Quran and the prophetic traditions judge him as being corrupt, an apostate, and an unbeliever. The Messenger of Allah وآله, said, He who insults Ali insults me, and he who insults me insults Allah, and he who insults Allah, Allah would throw him into hell. If that is the punishment for those who insult Ali, one wonders about the punishment of those who fought him and ultimately killed him. What are our scholars' opinions regarding all these facts? Or are their hearts locked solid? Say, O oh God, please protect us from the tricks of the devil. Chapter 17 To be continued